this country, even the world. In this context, I'm, making, I'm asking you to heed the charge of stewardship. I'm asking you, in spite of any different political or policy views, to endorse as a board Governor Brown's revenue initiative. I'm trying to get you a better I'm feed here. To endorse an I'm sorry about that. Our signal's not that good. So that we can ensure a strong UC for generations ahead. Madam Chair, that concludes my remarks. Ooh. Finally, I want to close with saying that 
we oppose any loss of the monies going to the retention and recruitment of people of color and students here. This institution is supposed to serve all of Californians, and we demand that. recently deceased financial secretary <laughs> of the UC Student Workers Union. I've come back from the debt, <laughs> the debt that you all have dumped on me and tens of thousands of other students, hundreds of thousands of other students in California by increasing our tuition nearly 300% in the last decade. Now, all of you, we've left a copy of this letter that was sent to you. If you didn't get it electronically, we've left a hard copy with the region secretary. It's a letter from the UC Student Association, the Council of UC Faculty Associations, and every major labor union at UC. And the letter called on you uh, to stand with us in asking Governor Brown to reverse his vetoes of key protections for students. Oh, also, Dusty and North is pulling her time. I, I have one other person who's pulling her time, Dusty and North. Dusty and who? Dusty and North. And who, oh, I need one more. Serena Diaz. What Serena. was that? Sorry. Serena, Serena Diaz. Okay, go ahead. So, um, as I was saying, this letter called on uh, you to support us in asking the governor to reverse his vetoes recently. Uh, and one of those vetoes was an elimination of funding protections for recruitment and retention of students of color and under, students from underrepresented communities. President Udoff in the press and in a letter to you actually took credit for getting the governor to veto those protections for students of color. And the funny thing was is that then when President Udoff responded to our letter on your behalf. He was surprised by the rancor of our letter. Now, I don't think you should be surprised by rancor. When, when you are saying Orwellian crazy things to us, like we're eliminating protections of funding for recruitment of students of color in order to protect funding for students of color. It's like war War is peace, you know, straight out of Orwell. So I think we need a big change here. Um, you know, you also, this follows this kind of general pattern of saying, in order for you, the regents, to restore quality and affordability at UC, you need to have all of these oversight and accountability measures from the state eliminated. Time. I think that is an ahistorical and inappropriate claim for a university president and a professor of law to make. Thank you. The record in history is that in the 1960s and 1970s, we achieved the greatest affordability and greatest quality in the history of this university when we had the most accountability and oversight from the state. We need to go back to that. Thank you. Being in front you of all of you. Yourself? Yeah, I don't need myself to feel dead. Okay. Uh, I'm Nikolai Smith. Next speakers are Jonathan Lee. Yeah. Oh, hello. Hey. Hi, I'm Nikolai Smith. I'm a PhD student at UC San Diego. You can start the clock. Uh, I'm here in solidarity with 17 Arab, Muslim, and Palestinian rights organizations at the UC to urge the administration to not adopt the recommendations of the recent campus climate reports, which violate the free speech rights of Palestinian liberation activists, conflate criticism of Israeli state policy with anti-Semitism, and trivialize the political reality of a violent occupation by framing it as a problem of dialogue between students of different religions. Yeah. Anti-Jewish bigotry should be challenged at every turn, but leveraging the UC administration to silence diverse groups and voices, many of them Jewish and Israeli, for criticism of Israel on US campuses is utterly reprehensible. 
Meanwhile, students of color, including Palestinian, Arab, and Muslim students, have raised serious issues and incidents of racism on campus that are receiving little attention or official recognition. The report highlights the UC administration's hypocrisy and double standard as Arab and Muslim students have been verbally attacked with racist comments and have received death threats. The repression of free speech rights and Islamophobic and anti-Arab racist fueled attacks are related to the privatization of our university. As long as the UCs are governed undemocratically and unaccountably by a small room of millionaires who have no commitment to public education, higher education in California will continue to be outpriced. I can obviously that a minute is not enough to make public comment. And campus speech will be limited minutes. to the whims of individuals with no connections to education or the daily realities of workers and students. <laughs> on the Board of Directors for the UC Student Association as the External Vice President for UC Santa Cruz. I am here today to talk about Regents items F1 and F2, which is the endorsement of Proposition 30, the Schools and Local Public Safety Protection Act of 2012. Year after year, we send students to Sacramento to lobby legislators on important issues that impact students and tirelessly demand no more cuts, no more tuition increases. Coming into the university, I was overwhelmingly surprised by the rising cause of tuition and the large cuts to funding for higher education. As a product of public K-12 education, I've come to discover that getting a student into college takes one mission, while being retained within the university takes another. Our retention is constantly at risk as we continue to face hard budget cuts that impact both our academic experience as well as our student services on campus. My purpose here today is to make you all aware of the problem that students continue to face given the political climate that we are in. To put it into simple terms, we just can't afford it. I can't afford it. The barriers that used to keep students out of higher education are coming back, and they're coming back fast, and we face it most when it comes to budget. Time. Kevin Fuang. Um, I serve as the organizing director of the UC Santa Cruz Undergraduate Student Government and I also serve on the board of directors for the UC Student Association. Um, I, as a politics student going into my third year in UC Santa Cruz, I've seen my share of fee hikes in my years in college. As the first of my family to go to college, I admire that promise of accessibility in the UC. However, I've come to learn that this reality of accessibility has disintegrated over the decades by, by the state's deinvestment investment in the UC. You have been bestowed with fiduciary power over the UC. Please show that you're committed to a truly public higher education that is affordable to the public of California by endorsing Proposition 30 and, and Item F2. A NAVO only shows that you are comfortable with forcing students to pay $2,000 over the federal poverty line of a single household to attend the UC. Please do not stand idly by. Regardless of your personal sentiments toward the governor or the taxes, please support Prop 30. Thank you. My name is Justin DeWale, and I'm an undergraduate at UC San Diego. I want to re reiterate how the, this current crisis with the UC is a crisis of neoliberalism and capitalism. In an ongoing conflict to privatize and profit from every sector of society that is possible, the ruling class, which includes the regents, has turned to education, as education is not yet fully in private hands. And with the speculation on student loans, the use of students' increasing tuition for self-enriching financial investments, the decreasing fraction of funding for the UC that actually comes from the state, and the egregious private partnerships that have taken over our research facilities, the Board of Regents can hardly pretend anymore that the UC is not being privatized. It's obvious. What is particularly perverse about education being privatized is that education can only function as a public good. Education is about challenging and inflating one's intellect. It is meant to cultivate creative, critical thinking, and compassionate citizens who can contribute positively, positively to society. The university is only a university when people of all backgrounds have equal access to it and can participate in and engage with education. Education is a human endeavor, not a rich person's endeavor. However, this board would like to just find it was the latter. I'll leave it. Good morning, Board of Regents. My name is Jonathan Lee. I'm sure you can remember me from all of the meetings beforehand. I 
I'm here today speaking on behalf of graduate students, actually, uh, because uh, today the Board of Regents will be addressing uh, fee increases for 57 uh, graduate uh, professional student programs. And when 57 programs need a fee increase, it's the policy, it's not the system. Uh, in item F6 on pages 6 and 7, there's a of information about the establishment of new uh, prof uh, professional programs, but uh, it's a very short rundown. There's no comparison to peer public institutions of whether the programs they have comparable to the ones we seek to establish are professional programs in which students will be hit not only with tuition, but the professional degree supplemental tuition, so PDSPs. Um, why, are, like, why are programs being established if there aren't any comparison if PDSTs are not, uh, PDSTs are being charged to professional students. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Raquel Morales. I'm an undergrad at UC San Diego, and I'm also the outgoing Legislative Committee Chair for UCSA. I'm here to urge you all to support the uh, Governor's ta um, Task Initiative. As you all have heard multiple times, and as you see, our students cannot simply um, take any more trigger cuts. Like we're done. That it's too. It's, it's been a lot of money placed on us, a lot of deficit, a lot of loans that we have to take out. So I'm here to urge you all to support that. Of course, um, I was there when we lobbied the uh, the legislators in Sacramento. We stood by them. You all are asking for more money to support us, so we're asking you to support us by supporting this initiative. Um, Lieutenant Governor Newsom, you've been great at supporting our students. So I would really want to urge you to support this as well. This is a commitment that you all can make to our education because a 20% trigger cut is just not good. It can't happen anymore for our students. We have students dropping out all the time. We have students taking out more loans, and it's, it's just been a lot. It's been a lot. Um, it's been a lot placed on us, and we are the future. So please, thank you. tuition has been increased by 300%, even while our academic services continue to be cut every year. Please understand that no matter how you may view taxes in your personal professional life, in your capacity as a agent, it is your duty to enforce this tax initiative and help students. Thank you. Mr. Dewitt. Hello. Thank you. My name is Dwayne Dewitt. <coughs> graduated from UC Berkeley in 2008. I want to say thanks to UC Berkeley and especially Ron Williams, who's the director of the Veterans Program. Very good man who's helped the Transfer Center and the Reentry Center at UC Berkeley to become one of the best places for veterans to attend college in the United States. I ask you to help more veterans to attend UC by not increasing professional fees for graduate schools and for placing a freeze on tuition for the undergraduate students. There needs to be free career counseling during these tough economic times. Many graduates are not receiving jobs upon graduation. Many highly educated UC graduates are unemployed and deeply in debt to student loans. The UC system should provide all of its graduates free career counseling and job search assistance. If need be, freeze the wages of the upper management until the California question is over and help students for free to find mm -hmm. jobs. Thank you very much and go Bears. <laughs> you guys about item F6, the professional degree supplemental tuition that you'll be voting on. Um, we just heard President Udall and Jerry Lansing talk about fee freezes that are being negotiated with the state, but yet you're going to be voting on over 50 new fees for graduate students or increases in fees. 
And while I, I appreciate that you have these proposals in front of you and you expect that UCOP has properly vetted these proposals, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about this vetting process. The sheet that you see with the proposals in front of you says the graduate students have seen these, the graduate student governments have commented on them. What you don't see is our actual comments. The questions we raise, the concerns that we raise, you're charging professional fees for academic programs. We are going to be some of the only schools charging professional fees for academic programs. Some of these professional fees are more than double the tuition that students pay, and yet you expect us to come out and be successful in the world, yet a lot of these students are projected to make 50, 60,000 and yet are going to have an increased burden. Or they say they've vetted these proposals in front of prospective students. One of these prospective programs has talked to 10 undergraduate students. What do 10 undergraduate students understand about graduate student debt and the Thank workforce you. coming out? So I, I encourage you to look a little bit more carefully about the, at the process and these proposals before voting on them. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Regents. My name is Ryan Krebs. I'm a new graduate of UCLA. I'm also a transfer from a California Community College, so I'm a product in essence of the 1960 master plan. And it's from this perspective that I urge you to vote against fee hikes, because while they may appear as just abstract numbers on a piece of paper, they're human stories and human lives. So please keep this in mind. Thank you. Good morning, Regents. My name is Anthony Galassa, and I'm a fourth year student at UC Berkeley. And this past year, I had the opportunity of serving as a student government senator this past, this past year as well. I'm here today to urge you all to fully endorse Proposition 30, but I'm also here to strongly urge that you protect funding for students and workers that is being targeted by the governor's line item veto. Specifically, I urge that you protect funding for recruitment and retention programs. These programs allow greater opportunities to students of color who are some of the most marginalized in the state of California. These cuts comp compound one another and make quality education less accessible. To cut these programs would further burden students who need the most assistance. Diversity, affordability, and excellence all go hand in hand, and your decisions today will stand as a testament to what your values truly are. Please fulfill your duties and reaffirm your support of public higher education. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, I'm Devontae Jackson, and I'm representing the zombie crew here. Um, we have several demands. Our first demand is that there be no proposals to be brought before the regents to increase tuition automatically in the event that the tax initiative is adopted. We understand that we do have money at the UC and we reject a 20.3% tuition hike in the mid-year. Secondly, we, we don't want any tuition increases for professional master degree students, and we want a full endorsement of Proposition 30 by the UC Regents in the full faith effort to pass the initiative. Right now, it is, what, it's July right now. You should have got behind the tax initiatives when they were going last year. Millionaire's tax, right, right now, it's way too late in the game. You should have been using your political weight. We know that you do backdoor power brokering. You push the UC debt service privatization bill, and you work with the governor for line item vetoes, and we stand against that. We, we, and, Lastly, we, we want to reclaim public higher education. Yeah. We know that you all are corporate heads. We know that you don't re reflect a public institution. And we want to reclaim, as zombies today, public education because we know that students, workers, staff, and faculty should be running our university. <laughs> Oh, just, 
just go anyway. I'm here today because I had to wait in line to add courses at my community college. Because as a vocal student on campus, I was told there was simply no money. Classes had to be cut. There just isn't I any money, they told me. There's no money. No money for part-time teachers, for ESL sections, math courses, enrichment, community education. No money for new buildings, for a quarter of a million dollar salaries for the president, for six-figure salaries for the competitively hired new managers of the school, right? No money. As we were cut, we saw the millions of dollars flood into building projects, into reserve funds. Students were turned away. There's just no room for you. There's no money. Now at Berkeley, I'm told once again, the state says there's no money. There's no money to fund UC, to pay money for living wages for workers. The benefits are too expensive. Dignified retirement, funding for recruitment and retention centers, no money. $900 million in profit at UC hospitals, more managers than teachers, reasons for top management, no money. Yeah. More in California seeing the highest profits in history, but there's just no money. Not many months ago, we saw the millionaire's tax get bought out in a political power play. The wealthy, who coincidentally seem to be getting a different, a different answer to them, money talks. They would have to admit it. There is money in the state. There is money. It just remains in the hands of corporations seeing record, record profits, in the bank accounts and pockets of California's wealthiest, who see some of the lowest tax rates in the country. Where were the regions to support a tax plan that would guarantee funding for the UC to help restore these cuts seen by higher education and public services? When we demanded an answer from Steve Glazer of Governor Jerry Brown's office, why have the regions remained silent? We heard that they were threatened. We heard that they were told to stay quiet so the UC would see further cuts. He offered no answer, only pointed us to Jerry Brown's compromise plan. Your compromise plan. Working class people will again be asked to pay more, if only a little, in taxes to generate more revenue for the funding of our most basic needs. The regions have a... Okay, we have 10 more people who signed up to speak, and that's who we're here from. Any orders fine? Austin Britsky, Alan Angelica Salcina, Robert Turner, Laura Wells, Excuse me. Honest Chung, Bobby Gaston, Matt Wade, and then Captain Weiberger, Liz Perluma, and Danielle Diesel. Pablo City's time, thank you. Keep going, Pablo City's time. Danielle oh, yeah. Dieselberio will also cede her time. And what was your name? Danielle Dieselberio will cede her time. Working class people will once again be asked to pay more. The regents, you, you have a responsibility to endorse this tax initiative. We, students, workers, and community members, are here today because we have had enough. We're tired of our fees being raised in order that your companies can secure loans for massive building projects. We refuse to have our futures used as collateral. We will no longer be told there is no money. No money. There is money. We are here and we will continue to be here. We reject any proposals for a contingent fee hike. As your decisions kill our institution, we will not be put to rest. My name is Laura Wells. My name is Laura Wells, and I ran as the Green Party candidate for governor of California, and I wish we had won. If we had, the tax on the ballot in November would have been the millionaire's tax. That is the tax that the students were supporting, and that's the tax that the people preferred, according to polls. The millionaire's tax looked for a solution by addressing the extreme problem that we have in California, which is the extreme concentration of wealth and power. So we will, we collectively in California have a responsibility and we have a choice. We can either support the super rich in this state or we can support our next generation. I have a button that pretty well sums it up. Tax the rich. Duh!
Good morning. My name is Austin Pritzkat and I'm a sophomore at UC Berkeley. As a fourth generation Californian and as a third generation University of California student, I'm here to say that enough is enough. I reject any proposal that would increase tuition during the year, even if voters fail to approve Proposition 30. Tuition hikes since 2004 have increased tuition well over 300%, and Californian families, like mine, have had enough. The regents should have already acted, but should act today to officially support Prop 30, and they should make an extraordinary effort to help pass Prop 30 this fall. Also, the regents should pass funding protections for recruitment and retention of students of color, in order to help ensure that this system stays open to Californians of all backgrounds. Opposition to tuition hikes, however, should not overshadow the need to protect the workers and make the system possible. The regents should act to support funding protections for retirement security for UC workers and protect workers from any cuts, including the creation of a two-tier pension system. Students and workers will not accept yet another tuition hike or pay cut. We demand that you find another way. Thank you. It's nice to see how the regents pay attention to the students of having conversations by themselves. Generally, they're not even listening. Simply the timekeeper, she's always on it. I'm a UC Data staff member, and I'm here to ask the regents to help me recruit and retain high-quality staff. Uh, you would think with the employment outlooks in this uh, state that I would be able to recruit and retain excellent staff, but that's not the case. Later this morning, you're going to hear from the Council of University of California Staff Assemblies, their report. And one of the work groups I was part of uh, did an analysis of educational benefit for staff and staff dependents. I would encourage you to look closely at that work group report. It's a tool I need to help retain and attract high quality 